The morning after Beth has this confrontation with Yaron and Deepak, she goes and tries to file a missing persons report with the local police. Their initial reaction is Natalie was not officially missing yet. The police tell me that, you know, this happens a lot, so don't really worry about her too much. She'll show back up. Don't worry about it. Beth and the Alabama people, with the help of the local press, start to organize search parties, looking for anything, a piece of clothing. We all had to take turns to go to Aruba. You signed up for a shift, literally, because there was so much, there was so much going on. You know, everybody wanted to help, everybody. Early on, the government let every government employee off work. Could you imagine a whole country was out searching for her? But right from the start, the pace of the investigation was extremely frustrating. I don't think the Aruban authorities took this seriously enough, quickly enough. I assure you that every, every, every lead is being worked out. The Alabama group would go to all the Dutch bars. They would go to the casinos. They were just out looking to find Yaron. They just wanted to hassle him. We had to do something because it seemed like nothing was being done. It's necessary that you uh, let us do our work. That's the Aruba chief of police walks up to us and says, I don't want any cowboy stuff going on down here. We're the police, we'll handle it. They didn't like us, and we didn't like them. It was a marriage made in heaven. Hundreds and hundreds of leads were coming in. Every blonde that was seen on Aruba, it seemed, got phoned in. We always felt like with every lead, with every tip, it was always as if we were about to get her. Early Thursday morning, police had the security tapes ready from the lobby entrance where Yaron said that he dropped Natalie off. And as we watched the tape and the night turned into daylight on the screen, Natalie never appeared. The story that Yoran told them wasn't true. So I thought now, okay, this is it. They can go get these men and arrest them. It didn't happen. Natalie, you can reach me on your cell phone. When Beth felt like the police weren't getting anywhere. I will stay here until I find you, Natalie. She used the weapon that she had, which was the media. Natalie Holloway's mother and stepfather made no Natalie's secret of their growing dissatisfaction with this investigation. To reached a breaking point. Deborah Roberts has just arrived in the island's capital. Terry, tomorrow marks one week since 18-year-old Natalie I was Holloway. on the island and began broadcasting around day six. And by that time, there was a full media frenzy. To Wiener oh, reporting from Aruba this yeah, morning. news this morning in the case of the 18-year-old who vanished. A few days after I got there, I was able to convince Beth to sit down for her first television interview. Missing in paradise. The Alabama teen at the heart of a massive search. She was absolutely determined to find her daughter and to find her daughter alive. I know in my heart that, that we are going to find Natalie. Will you even let your mind entertain the possibility that you might not find her? Uh, no, th there again, that's not an option. I also interviewed Natalie's father, Dave. By then, he had joined the search and was also trying to help find his daughter. Why do you still feel that every day you've got to go out there? You know, I just can't sit in a hotel room. It's, you'll, you'll drive yourself crazy pacing the floor, and I just feel like I have to be out there looking. Just keep going, I think, up around the You look at the map of Aruba, and you think, this couldn't be that hard. You know, it's five miles long, 20 or 25, 30 miles long. I will find her easy. Is, is any parent's worst nightmare, Deborah? There, There is no other worst nightmare. We will just keep looking. Beth was so approachable, and she was every mom. And I think the way that Beth was talking from her heart. Please keep looking for her, okay? I appreciate it so much, okay? People wanted to help her. Thank you. What surprised me was just the level to which Beth seemed to be keeping it together. Please help bring her home. Thank you. But then there was a, a point in time where she kind of broke down. I went back to Natalie's hotel room and I had no more human strength left. I thought, you know, I've got to get out of here. I've got to go find a place to pray. So I found this taxi 
He took me to the other side of the island. There was a small, beautiful little chapel, Alta Vista Chapel, that was sitting on the hillside overlooking the sea. And I walked up to the cross and, uh, and just fell to my knees. And I was just crying and praying and just begging God to, to give her back. This is the only place on the island where I could come to feel close to Natalie. Yes, you lay your burdens at the cross, but there was a hell of a lot of work that needed to be done, and I got busy. After days of little to no progress, this morning there is a potential break in this case. The three young men originally questioned by police have been arrested. Are you guilty? They'd had 10 days to lawyer up, 10 days to cooperate their stories, and uh, 10 days to clean up their mess of whatever that was. Innocent people most commonly tell a consistent story, and there's began to change. Yaron and his two friends are confronted with the fact that they lied, that they had never dropped off Natalie at the hotel. A different story has emerged. The guys say that the Calpo brothers dropped Yorin and Natalie off at the beach where they fooled around. Then they just laid there and watched the stars until Natalie was apparently going in and out of sleep. And then Yoran said he wanted to go home and he left her sleeping there on the beach. The story keeps changing and the truth is getting further and further away. Throughout these first weeks, Beth Holloway was desperately trying to meet with Joran van der Sloot's parents. Joran's father was an attorney. He was training to be a judge. And there were allegations that Joran was being protected because of his father's relationships. Greta Van Susteren, live on island. I covered the story, and I, I made waves covering the story. I said, let's go over to the van der Sloot home. Let's get some answers. Hello? Is anybody home? I'm, I'm Natalie's mom. I just want to give you a prayer card. Paulus Vandersloot, so the much. father of Euron Vandersloot, came out Thank to the gate. You. Come in. But please Good. You know, stop the cameras, OK? We sit down at the dining room table. I wanted to be that close to Paulus Vandersloot, and I wanted to make him feel in some way how I was feeling. Beth was stern and direct. Anita, Yaron's mother, was crying, sobbing. Paulus, who was sitting next to me, was perspiring like something I have never seen in my life. I thought this man is the most pathetic human being I've ever seen because he knows what happened. He knew. Now there seems to be a shift, a little bit of a backlash against Beth. You could feel the tide turn. They were done with me. They were done with the media. They were done with everyone. Are you crazy? What is wrong with you? You have overstayed your bloody welcome in our If you don't okay. like it, go Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.